You're watching the American Conference on ESPN. Welcome to the Toyota Center in Houston, Texas, home of the NBA's Houston Rockets. Today, home of a college basketball triple header. The game number two is South Florida, the Bulls, out of the American Conference against Utah State. Utah State Aggies out of the Mountain West, and they're off to a 10 and 2 start. Utah State is Robert Ford, joined by former NBA GM Lance Blanks. And uh, you look at what the Aggies have been able to do, and you look at those numbers, and obviously, when you rank that highly in the NCAA, you're doing a lot of things right. Well, you are, and you're 10 and 2, and they were a little somber today. They, we'll get into this a little later. They got some injury issues, but I was like, why are you somber? This is a pretty good record with a very good roster. A fantastic roster. One of the injury issues they've had this year, a guy they've got back jumping center for the Aggies, Myas Cato, who tested the NBA waters last year. And he's able to help the Aggies win the opening tip. Abel Porter gets it to Keita, who's a very good passer, something to keep an eye on out of the post. Sam Merrill, leading scorer for Utah State, misses his first shot. And here come the Bulls for the first time on offense. Yeah, and the big fella, Tustin Warriors, they refer to him as Nimi. Him and Sam and Bean are they're kind of their big three for the Aggies. But Quincy Rideau unable to connect from deep. And Keita comes up with the rebound. Yeah, and Rideau will be relied upon from the perimeter car to carry the Bulls offensively along with Collins. Merrill trying to get inside, gets it back from Keita. And has that one taken away, a steal for Rideau. Here comes South Florida. Now they'll set things up, leading scorer David Collins handling the basketball. Michael Durr working against Keita, and the hook shot rims out. Nice job going back over the right shoulder, but in that last possession by the Aggies, Merrill got caught over dribbling. Gets it in the corner here. Boy, the big fella looks like potential ankle issue. Here's Keita playing in just his third game and his first start this season. Missed the first nine games with a knee injury that he suffered playing for Team Portugal this summer in the FIBA Under-18 Championships, European Championships. Yeah, it looked like he tweaked an ankle. I mean, he's still coming back from injury, so whenever that happens, you're susceptible to re-injuring yourself. Merrill, a double team. Skip pass to Brock Miller, but Miller unable to convert in the weak side rebound to Rideau. David Collins, the leading scorer. The three is jacked up, jacked up by Justin Brown, who misses the mark. And it's back the other way goes Utah State, and Porter able to convert on the layup for the game's first points. Boy, what was beautiful about that with Porter. He did a great job of cupping that ball, almost like a running back on a football field. And then just leaving it right over top of the basket. Nice finish. Rideau gets it outside, just inside the arc, and it rims out for Durr as Kata comes up with the rebound. Yeah. Aggies denying any screen action, pushing the ball handler away from the screen. Going inside, Bean draws the contact, and he'll go to the line for the game's first free throws. Here early, Bulls doing a poor job really of staying in front of ball handlers. Even the still that they got their hands on when Merle was over dribbling came from behind. And always try to keep the guy you're guarding between you and the basket. What? Dean Richard, sophomore out of Moore, Oklahoma, outside of Oklahoma City. And he's able to make this a perfect trip at the line. Averages 14 a game and the leading rebounder in the Pac-12, averaging nearly 12 boards. And it's 4 nothing in favor of Utah State. David Collins working his way inside. This is everything. And it will stay with South Florida with 13 on the shot clock. 
And ne Nemi is just such a presence in there, even when he doesn't get blocks. He alters shots and just makes it difficult. And he's certainly a guy that has the look and feel of someone who'll certainly be playing for money someday, if not at the highest level in the NBA. Six to shoot, and the layup is converted by the Quincy Rideau. First field goal for South Florida. Oregon, or Utah State leading 42. South Florida's guards do a nice job really of pushing the envelope in terms of their aggression to try to score the ball. They really pride themselves on their defense, USF. Their defensive numbers are exceptional. As Merrill this time left all alone and he's able to connect from D. Well, that was a poor rotation. You almost got a pre-rotate. A guy like Merrill, I mean, he shoots it 42% from beyond the arc. You don't want to give him clean looks. Eighth all-time in points in Utah State history, Sam Merrill. As Collins working his way inside, and he'll head to the line for another and line for a three-point play. Robert, that's an example of what I mean about these guards for USF and their desire to score and how much they probe and pressure the defense. You can't relent with pressure against their offensive pressure because they're going to be aggressive. That's a difficult basket, especially with Nimi down there around, around the bucket. Collins, a nice finish. First basket for the junior out of Youngstown, Ohio. 15.3 points per game coming in. Unable to convert on the three-point play opportunity as the Aggies have a three-point advantage. Get it inside to Alfonso Anderson into the game for the first time. And the foul called on Anderson pushing off. A nice job by Williams. And Anderson is a guy for the Aggies who can play both inside and out. There you see they went to him as a big. With Nimi being on the bench. There's Craig Smith, the coach of Utah State in his second season. Had a lot of success in South Dakota as the head coach there before coming to Logan, Utah, as Collins misfires on the three attempt, but the Bulls get the rebound. Ten to shoot. Inside goes Dawson, and he's unable to finish. Wow, unfriendly roll. Yeah, you talk about Coach Smith. His shoot-around was fun and lively and energetic. I mean, he was nonstop. And it's to the weak side. Merrill wide open. We saw him get open on the weak side for a three he converted earlier. Here come the Bulls. Collins with the pass, but the layup not converted by Anton Marachevich. Everything right except the finish there. Nice pass. Porter being aggressive, getting inside. Open three for Anderson. That misses the mark. Doe slowing things down. Senior out of West Palm Beach started his college career at Gardner Webb. Another big difference between these two teams, Rideau and the guards do a lot of ball handling themselves versus having people movement and ball movement through passing. Collins with four to shoot, trying to break down the defense and doesn't get the roll. Two very different styles here in terms of how they like to execute offensively. On the cut goes Bean, and he's able to lay it in. First field goal for Bean, he has four. Well, that's an example of what I mean by ball movement and people movement and the nice cut, which resulted in the basket. Five-point lead for Utah State. You're the big, you'll see, come set the screen. Now, how do you guard it? Collins puts it on the floor, and that's before the shot. Collins and South Florida will have it when we return. Utah State up by five. Play for both teams. Utah State with the five-point advantage. And the 10-2 record coming into this ball game as the Aggies led by Craig Smith in his second season as a head coach at Utah State with Mountain West Coach of the Year last season after 
getting Utah State to the NCAA tournament. They won the, the Mountain West Conference. Meanwhile, on the other side, you have Brian Gregory for South Florida. And this team that Brian Gregory has put together, they've gotten better each year. He's now in his third season. And last season, South Florida was able to win 24 games. Top turnaround in the Division I ranks. Won 14 more games last year than they had in Gregory's first year. Williams gets the loose ball and lays it in after Xavier Castaneda missed the shot from deep. And Gregory, I mean, he's an understudy to Tom Izzo, one of the best coaches in college basketball. Spent time there in Michigan. And just a, a, fine, a fine coach. Anderson working his way inside. Has it knocked away by Marasevic. And it will stay with Utah State. Three-point lead for the Aggies. Ryan Gregory has an offensive foul is called underneath. Ryan Gregory, head coach at Georgia Tech, for coming to USF. Had a lot of success before that as the head coach at Date. As you see, the, the foul underneath, fistful of jersey for Sam Merrill, his second score for Utah State. Williams commits the travel. Yeah, the action for the Aggies defensively will come down to examples of like the one you just saw there because of so many high ball screens, this guard oriented offense that the Bulls play. Three point lead for Utah State. Coming off their second loss of the season, falling. In Salt Lake City against Brigham Young, their in-state rival, their last time out, losing that game by four on Saturday. Merrill stopped at the elbow, seven to shoot, back in Merrill's hands, trying to make something happen, a step back, and it's no good. Kata almost had the rebound. Looked like he might have gotten grabbed there. I think both sides thought there might have been some contact, but it's Rideau who comes up with it for the Bulls. Collins loses the ball, gets it back. Inside to Maratevic, who's able to lay it in off the glass. Senior yeah. out as a grab Croatia. Yeah, Maratevic did a good job of showing hands and making body big, unlike he did on the break where he couldn't finish. I mean, he's so big with his girth, he should be able to finish almost any time he wants around the basket. Rideau commits the foul away from the ball. Rideau will stay with the Aggies here. He's their lead trimmed to one. Brito with the ball. Diogo Brito into the game for the first time. Wide open three for Anderson. But that misses the mark. And Xavier Castaneda, the guard, comes up with the rebound. Foul called underneath on Utah State, or on uh, South Florida, beg your pardon. Yeah, and if you're disciplined and you're the Aggies and you stay in front of these guards, you'll be okay because it's not the first or second dribble. Even the third dribble, they will probe, meaning the guards for USF, and trying to make something happen at or around the rim. That foul is on Castaneda for pushing off. Kata, the handoff. Inside, nice back cut. to Kata on the cut, and he lays it in. Boy, just a fine pass. Nimi found the open area. Seven-foot sophomore out of Portugal. Playing for the third time in the last four games after having that knee injury earlier this year. It'll be South Florida ball when we return. We'll come back with some of our top stories after this. And welcome back to the Toyota Center. Robert Ford joined by former NBA general manager Lance Blanks. 
as, you know, so far you watch this game, and it's been a, a contrast of styles. One team maybe uh, dribbling a little bit more, one team maybe moving a little bit more without the ball. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. A lot of DHO or dribble handoffs by one team, and the other one, a lot of movement with passing. We saw Nimi get to the basket, and then he was able to finish. Here you'll see it come. Watch the big. You'll see the big body flash right there, and he hits him. We'll see a lot of that type of action from the Aggies today versus high screens and dribble handoffs by guards who are probing, probing, probing for USF. It should be a lot of fun, Robert, as we come down the stretch. Also, keep in mind, Nimi's getting himself back in a rhythm in a groove, first game back from injury. So it'll be a nice uh, thing to earmark in terms of watching him get back with the team, get coordinated with himself and his body, as well as find some continuity of how he can execute both on the defensive and offensive end of the floor. Utah State up by three here. South Florida controlling. Nine to shoot. Rideau trying to find his big man there, Durr, but Utah State winds up coming up with it. Order around the screen from Kata. And now Kata sets another screen, this time for Miller. And Kata able to hook, hit the hook shot. Nice screen and roll there. Boy, Nimi made a nice finish there. That, that was a little jump hook, but from about eight feet. You know, talking with Utah State head coach Greg Smith yesterday, he talked rather glowingly about the high basketball IQ of Namias Keda does so many things on the floor. Nine to shoot, Riddell off the glass, unable to finish. And unable to save it, the Bulls, as Riddell was out of bounds. A lot of NBA scouts here during between the games, I talked to different guys. And, Nimi's a big reason for that. This is a guy that NBA people will be very interested in. You don't have many people that are that size, move like he can move. In college basketball. Miller takes a shot. Kata, nice bounce pass to Brito, but he's unable to connect. Or Bird did just a great job there defensively for USF. He pushed Nimi out away from the basket so he could not finish and then altered the shot at the rim. I mean, that was just, Dar did an excellent job. Here you see the miss free throw, I mean, the miss, miss layup. Three from the right corner and it misses everything from Abel Porter. Again, Durr, a nice closeout. Top of the key, three is drilled. LaQuincy Rideau, he's got five with South Florida's 11. And Utah State with the ball, leading by two. Order, going to get rid of it. As Keda can't handle the pass from Rideau, and here come the Bulls. Rideau. Trying to beat everyone up the court, and he's able to spin it in off the window. Well, you've really got to have floor balance against USF because they're going to come at you aggressively, both in half court, but certainly in full court situations. Utah State with the timeout as South Florida able to knot the score. Well, yeah, and Rideau, they're going to rely on him heavily for offense. Nice throw ahead, and anytime you get him going full steam, it's going to be very difficult to stop him unless you've got a man in front. Good game here and plenty of good basketball around college basketball, around Division I college hoops. As we take a look at, at some of the top storylines so far, if you're number one with the way things have gone so far, don't expect to be there long. <laughs> Big matchup coming up Saturday between Ohio State and Kentucky. And the Tar Heels unranked and playing without their freshman superstar, Cole Anthony, who's been hurt the last few games. I, mean, I saw him against Virginia. He's a fine ball player, but I don't know what the timeline is for him to come back, but he's going to need some help. 
This Carolina team is not what you're used to seeing. Oh, that was beautiful two-man game there by Merrill and Bean. Justin Bean with the finish. Boy, it looks like, it seems like we are in groundhog day mode. How many times have we seen that basket cut end in a layup and now on a dunk? Remember, out of a timeout, coaches love to execute offensively. Two-point lead for the Aggies. Seven to shoot. Collins trying to get inside. And a whistle, and it's an offensive foul. They're going to get Collins for pushing off. Well, yeah, he hooked him right there on the baseline. There really wasn't anywhere for him to go, but Collins had committed to getting the shot up. And Coach Gregory clearly <laughs> disappointed in his decision. And Collins taking the seat with the two fouls. Casaneda back into the game for the Bulls. Orders back to Bean. Good ball movement leads to an open three for Miller, who's unable to connect, but the offensive rebound to the Aggies. And a foul underneath. That's going to be on Utah State. Yeah, and this is, again, a point of emphasis. Porter there didn't get set. He passed the ball. He's the one to foul right there. You'll see him clip the defender with his left shoulder. First foul on Porter. You really, as a defensive, or as an offensive player, you've got to either get set or get out of the way of the defense. The rules have tilted to the defense's favor in, when it comes to screening. Durr with the slam to tie the game once again. Well, I really love Durr. He's the one who created that action up top with the screen and then just made himself big and present around the basket. Rideau was able to find it. And the foul called on South Florida. As you take a look at that last basket from the seven-footer Durr with the stuff. Well, this starts before this with the screen, and then he just rolled right to the basket. Anytime you've got Rideau with the ball coming off of the screen, you've got a big decision to make because he's able to knock it down, get to the rim, and then you've got a big behind him. Well, he's going to find the guy for the right shot. That's an Ada call for that last foul for USF. Merrill has that one blocked away by Durr. He's wow. making his presence felt. Yeah, on both ends of the floor. I really love this guy and the way he plays. And he moves his feet. Dawson misses the front. Misses off the front. And quickly back up court. Go the Aggies. Anderson, he gets stripped. I believe that was Brown with the strip. Justin Brown. Bulls will slow things down. South Florida very good defensively. Ryan Gregory saying yesterday he, he's felt like the last three or four games his team has really started to play defense the, the way he would like. And, and not surprising, you look, and South Florida's won three in a row coming in. As that three misses the mark from Rideau, and then a foul on the rebound charge to South Florida. So it'll be Utah State ball when we return, all knotted at 15. This Friday, bowl season begins. Buffalo takes on Charlotte in the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl at 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, then at 7.30 on ESPN2. This one should be a battle of QBs. Jordan Love leads Utah State against Dustin Crum and Kent State in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. Both games are also live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. Charlotte playing in their first bowl game. Of course, a lot of folks watching this one interested in Utah State's bowl game. Frisco Bowl just outside of Dallas. As the Aggies on the basketball side, they were ranked as high as 15 at one point. Take a look at South Florida head coach Brian Gregory. And this is a, a South Florida team. You look at what they've been able to do defensively, and that's what's 
really been the, the big key for them. They've held nine of the ten teams they've played this year, Lance, below their season averages scoring wise. And you know that's got to be a point of emphasis. Well, it's obvious just looking at them and shoot around and how much, you know, they went through schemes in terms of how they were going to guard things, especially for his, a team like the Aggies. You've really got to be prepared for ball movement and player movement, which clearly USF is doing the right thing tonight. No. Gives it back to Zacharias Dawson, the third. No, nine to shoot. Trying to work his way inside against Bean. Unable to hit the hook shot, but Durr with the follow that doesn't fall. Rideau, another offensive rebound, but unable to finish again. And another one for Brown, who's finally able to convert. Well, that will upset any opposing head coach when you give up that many offensive rebounds in one possession. Well, this USF team just has a relentless spirit about them. They control the boards here. And Brown finished it off, which was emblematic of that entire possession. They refused to not score. Brown misses the... Gets it out to Merrill. Oh, it's been quiet so far. Well, it's a great defensive possession by USF. They've just got to finish it. Merrill gets going with the three. His second of the game. An average is 17 a game to lead the Aggies. The senior out of Bountiful, Utah. Oh, yeah, and you got to know. You know, Rideau's, I know he knows. He gets late in the clock. You've got to stay with him of all people. Rideau gets the Bulls back to within two. He's got nine. Well, that's a point of emphasis for USF. They have not figured out a way to solve that when Rideau has it at the top and he's going downhill. Kata, the lefty hook, and he's fouled. Bulls can't believe it as Durr gets called for his second. Utah State up by two as we go to break here. Sam Merrill getting going. Well, yeah, we got a bit of a chess match that's broken out. <laughs> Utah State up by two. Utah State with a two-point lead over South Florida, which has been playing much better of late. They're coming off a 20-point win over Drexel on Sunday, game in which they forced 19 turnovers. It's a very good defensive team. You see the steals numbers there. And, uh, David Collins, two points so far, but he's been their leading scorer this year, averaging over 15 a game. Scored his 1,000th point in the Bulls' last matchup. Well, yeah, and you talk about what they've done in, at the 10-game mark. That's about right when things start settling in for guys. The system's in place, and so obviously they've got things where they want them, having won three of the last four. See there, Houston and Memphis picked atop the American preseason poll. South Florida selected fifth as Kata able to knock down the first here. And Houston, Coach Kelvin Sampson has just done a really nice job of taking that program to a new level. We've had a lot of excitement around this city. Had new facilities and football's going. And a really strong national program. Yeah, after really University of Houston was kind of dormant really and yep. certain, cer certainly on the national college basketball scene. Absolutely. It's really changed. Three and a half remaining in the first half. South Florida with the ball down by four. Rideau loses it but gets it to Chaplin after picking up the loose ball. And Jameer Chapman, 6'5", freshman out of North Cross, Georgia, his first. Boy, you just love how this, team, this USF team plays. I mean, they, they do not quit on anything defensively or offensively, and you have to appreciate that as a coach. Trying to get it inside to Kata. He has it knocked away. He'll stay with Utah State. Well, a great job by Williams. He was almost late there, but it was a clear example of helping the helper. You know, on the other hand, Rideau, again, he's on his bottom. I think the play is over, and he finds an offensive player to finish. Oh, you got caught with your hand in the cookie jar. And Merrill's going to make you pay for that. Yeah, he is. He's got three threes for nine points. 
Back up to a five point advantage for Utah State. Yeah, Merkevich got caught under the basket, and anytime that happens with Merrill, it'll be lights out. You see here Merrill on the high side of Rideau, pushing him away from using the screen. Rideau comes around the screen and gets the friendly bounce. Number three, Eleven points, lead all scores for Rideau. Yeah, just nice patience by Rideau. You can't let up at any point when these ball handlers for USF have the ball. Porter on the handoff for Kata, who rolls to the basket, and that's an offensive foul. Yeah, and. We talked about it a moment ago when Williams came over a little late and he was able to get a steal there. That was late as well by Chaplin. And because of that, take that back. That was, <laughs> was that a, it looked like his foot was on that. Yeah. I saw the same thing you did on the uh, restrict, in the restricted area. Yeah, it looked like the foot was there, but nevertheless, Got the charge. Data takes the seat with two fouls. That may be the biggest part of that play. South Florida with a chance to tie it here, but then they commit a foul away from the ball. How many times have we seen that? We keep seeing this because the screeners aren't getting set and or the guy coming off the screen isn't waiting an extra count to allow the screener to get set. First on Maritavich. Utah State maintaining the three point advantage. Bean spinning his way inside. Miller open, but unable to connect. Working his way inside, gets it to Marachevic, and then losing the ball down low with Sean Williams. The Aggies all alone. Anderson knocks it in. You gotta find people in tuck on defense. Spoke about it a moment ago with Anderson. He's a guy you especially want to find because he plays in so many areas of the floor in terms of his impact on the offense. Timeout for South Florida. Utah State's lead has gotten up to a half dozen. It's been a, a closely fought game throughout here in this first half with 102 remaining in the half. And I'd have to imagine here if you're Brian Gregory Lance, you just kind of want to reset here and try and finish the half strong, taking that timeout right there, making sure everybody's focused. Yeah, let me add to that, Robert. Yeah, you want momentum stop yeah. or you want to create a little momentum going into the half. So it makes sense that you would stop that on that three that you just gave up. Utah State has gotten off to a fantastic start this year. Let's take a look at that last three by Anderson. I'm all night making USF pay for when they do make mistakes, even though USF really excels at the defensive end. South Florida up by six, or beg your pardon, Utah State up by six. As South Florida is trying to make something happen here. Marichevich fronted in the post, now double team. Good passing. Chaplin to Williams, who finishes. Rashun Williams, sophomore out of Arlington, Georgia, with his second bucket. He's got four. And South Florida gets it to within four. About a 10 second difference between game and shot clock here. Porter, Dean, he traveled. And South Florida will get to play for the final shot and a chance to get a little closer here. And make sure you stay tuned at the half as our very own Lance Blanks. There's some issues with March Madness. Lance Blanks, our man, he's got the answers. And we're going to hear from him about that coming up at the half. You don't want to miss it. South Florida running the clock down here. 
Inside, Rideau now with 13 points. And Utah State goes into the locker room up by two. South Florida, like Utah State, might take off with things a little bit. Got it to six. South Florida able to get a couple of baskets to, to keep this a, a tight ball game. And it's been tight pretty much throughout this first half. Neither team has really been able to, to widen out to a, a big lead. Biggest lead for either side is six points. It's, let's go now to Lance Blanks. He's with head coach Craig Smith of Utah State. Hey, Coach, nice job of sustaining the lead, but difficult to break away. What do you think's been behind the ability of USF to stay so close? Well, they're a good defensive team. They force a lot of turnovers. We've had some uncharacteristic turnovers. Thought we had really good looks. We just didn't make them until the end. I thought we finally kind of got in a rhythm. Uh, we got to figure out our mid-screen roll defense because three is uh, shredding us right now. And then they had a little stretch there where second chance opportunities really kept them in the game. So we got to tighten that up as well. Took away my second question, which is Rideau going downhill. So I'll have to go to a third well, question. Tell me to shut up once in a while. I, I talk too much. I've been told. Please don't <laughs> do that. No, coach. So what? This is a bit of a chess match. Obviously, the coaches are probably a little more involved in this game than would be normal. What is the adjustment? Do you think? We're keeping Rideau out of the paint when he gets going downhill. Well, hey, we just got to be better. You know, sometimes you make adjustments and sometimes you just got to fight harder. And he's alone now, you know, at 6'1", 6'2", 205. He gets his shoulders on you and he sheds you. Um, but our, our big's got to get, I thought, too many times we were too low on that. And then we just might have to look at some other things just to change up and uh, uh, show a different disruption, so to speak. I could talk a lot more with you, but good luck for the second half. Coach. All right, thank you. All right, thanks, Lance and Craig Smith. Utah State with the two-point lead. But Quincy Rideau keeping South Florida close. He leads them with 13 at the half. Sam Merrill and Utah State with the two-point lead at the half. But Quincy Rideau, a game-high 13 points for South Florida as the Bulls have kept it close throughout Utah State with the 31-29 advantage as Lance, we take a look at the, the first half stats. Well, you can expect not necessarily the one for seven, but that man there, Rudeau and Merrill, the stars have been the stars for either ball club. Coaches obviously know what they're doing, making sure that guys like Rideau and Merle are getting the bulk of the shots to me come down to which star is the biggest star of the two stars. South Florida can tie or take the lead here. Getting the first possession of the second half. Rideau around the Durr screen. Collins working his way inside. An errant shot there, tried to go for the steal, but Merrill able to hold on. Merrill to the hole, and the tip-in is good for Kata. Yeah, anytime you get a guard that drives, the bigs just follow that because it's very difficult for the offense or the defense to collapse on the driver and protect the rebound. Got to keep guys out of the paint from the perimeter. And foul away from the ball. It's on Merrill. Merrill trying to plead his case with the officials, saying, no, that should be on Collins. But instead, Merrill picks up his third early here in the second half. Yeah, and that wasn't called on Durr because he got set. We saw earlier where some fouls have been called on the offensive player setting the screen. There, Durr was set. Riddell surveying things. Four point lead for the Aggies. And a turnover for South Florida. Miscommunication between Riddell and Justin Brown. Yeah, Riddell is very fortunate because he did put that little shoulder in the porter as he was trying to go downhill and create a little space. And off to Merrill from Kata. Miller with the three. Misses the mark and then a foul underneath on the screen, I believe. Well, that foul was on Merrill. 
Um, what no on Miller, who took, the, who took the shot. They're going to call the foul on David Collins. His third for South Florida. Their leading scorer coming in. He's got just two points. And he's going to take a seat as Xavier Castaneda comes back. Utah State with the ball and a four-point advantage. And how about Rideau taking the challenge to guard Merle? Florida's just two for nine from three-point range. Geta looking at his options, and he's called for the carry. Trying to work against Dirk. Right now, I think USF is in a situation where they need some offensive support for Rideau. Right now, he's carrying the bulk of the load. The zone starting to wear on USF. Able to get it to Brown. And he's unable to hit the mid-range jumper. Yeah, and what this zone has done is forced other people, Robert, to have to score for USF. That's exactly what Craig Smith wants. As Kenna working his way inside, and he's fouled. Durr picks up his third. Yeah, and with that shot, Nimi brought the ball right into Durr's face, but Durr's got to do a better job of moving his feet. Goes right through the arm. It looked like two fouls in one play. Kata heads to the line. Tested the water, sophomore. Thought about coming out for the NBA draft after his freshman year, but ultimately decided to stay in school and then playing for Portugal in the FIBA European Championships, under 18 European Championships this summer, wound up hurting his knee while playing for Portugal. And missed the first nine games of the season. And this is only his third game back for Utah State. Yeah, and NBA people have looked at him a lot. I think the question will be about his health and how connected he can become. And that was pretty from Dawson. His first basket of the night. It comes from deep. Well, that's huge for USF getting some support from beyond the arc. Again, part of the chess match here is knocking down shots over this zone that they've come to play. They're trying to get it to Kata there on the alley-oop from Porter, but unsuccessful. Brown trying to be successful with a three, but that rims out. However, South Florida, they had the loose ball, and now they get it as Porter almost came away with it. Casaneda misses everything. Yeah, and he missed that because of Nimi. He did a good job of spreading out. I don't know if he tipped it, but he altered the shot. I post for Bean. Good passing inside, and Cato with the finish. 14 for Demias Cato. Boy, it's very difficult action to guard when you've got Murrow coming off of Nimi again. You see the big three stepping up here with Nimi, Bean, and Murrow. That's a heck of a big three that USF has to deal with on the offensive end. Largest lead for the Aggies tonight. Martavik working his way inside and able to hit the layup. Wow, great patience by Martavik. Back to a five-point game. Bean gets it to Kata, and a nice job deflecting that by Dawson. This Friday, bowl season begins. Buffalo takes on Charlotte in the Makers Wanted Bahamas Bowl at 2 Eastern on ESPN, then at 7.30 on ESPN2. Should be a battle of the QBs. Jordan Love leads Utah State against Dustin Crum and Kent State in the Tropical Smoothie Cafe Frisco Bowl. Both games are also live on the ESPN app, so you can watch anywhere. I'm sure plenty of people will be watching from Logan, Utah. Utah State, Kent State. Bold matchup as a steal. Here comes Castaneda off glass, and he's fouled. 
Castaneda did a beautiful job of cutting off Anderson's angle at the rim. He was out wide, which was prime territory for a shot to be blocked. Rudo, Rudo does a good job of getting his hands on the ball. Then you see him close that little space there at the end. I mean, just a textbook way to finish, especially when there's a big size difference. He negated Anderson's ability to get off the floor and affect that shot. And Rob, that's an example of what I mean about going to finish versus going to get the foul. You just let that, no pun intended, be the bonus, but you should always go and look to finish versus getting fouled. Utah State, Lee trimmed to two. Merrill trying to work his way inside. And this will be a South Florida foul on Collins, and that's going to be four on him. Colin Collins is extremely aggressive. He can't stay on the court any length of time. He takes a steep seat once again. With the four fouls, just two points for South Florida's leading scorer. Yeah, but most of the action will be a lot different with this lineup with Nimi on the bench for Utah State. Things will happen more on the perimeter or with cuts to the basket. As Rideau gets his hands on another basketball, and Rideau commits the foul. So we've seen Rideau in the last two Utah State possessions be a disruptor. Led to a three-point play by Castaneda, the possession before, and this time Rideau Creates the turnover and draws the contact. What a great description. Disruptor is what he is on both ends of the floor. He's really had the bulk of the game in his hands with his impact. Particularly now on the defensive end with these steals. Timely steals. Wide open three from the right corner, but it misses the mark. Sean Williams. Order. Merrill alone, and Merrill, he makes that happen. Yeah, and because of Rideau helped off of him. I mean, you're almost on an island on the perimeter because Rideau has got to stay home with Merrill. We're talking about a guy who shoots a lower percentage from two than three. For three for Merrill today. Tend to shoot, Castaneda. Working his way inside and off the glass. Nice move to a loop beam. And a whistle it is a three-point lead for Utah State. Well, both teams <laughs> exploiting mistakes. Well, we got a barn burner here in Houston. Utah leading South Florida. Sam Merrill, talented guard for Utah State. His name all over the Aggie record books. 18 points so far tonight. And that ties him for seventh place all time in Utah State history. 1,774 points for Merrill. Kendall Youngblood, who finished up his Aggie career in 1992, is who Merrill is tied with for seventh in school history in scoring. Yeah, what a fine ball player. He is, Robert, I mean, and he's a senior. He went on a mission. It really shows you how, as guys mature, how the game can slow down for them. He has a kind of a strange statistic in that he only shoots 40% from two, 42% from three. And I think that's in large part because he's not an extremely athletic guy where he can raise up over people around the rim and the like, but you give him space and he makes you pay on the perimeter with the three ball. Utah State with the ball and the three-point advantage. As Marchevich commits the foul on the entry feed to Bean. And Merrill's a guy, you'll hear coaches say this sometimes, he's more dangerous without the ball than when he has the ball, especially Rudeau is guarding him because he's done a good job of coming up with steals and deflections. But when you want to guard him is when he doesn't have the ball because he's so good off the screens and finding open spaces to get clean looks. Merrill, the reigning Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. Nine to shoot. And stepping on the sideline, Utah State. is Diogo Brito committing the turnover. South Florida, they're getting opportunities here. 
They did tie it a few times in the first half. But it's been a, a little bit of a different story here in the second half as South Florida has been able to, or Utah State rather, has been able to maintain the lead. Archevic working inside a triple team, and one of those three made contact. Well, you might remember a few possessions ago, Archevic got the ball under the basket, and he was able to score over Neme. Here you see the adjustment with help coming from Bean. And when you've got a big that can score down low, it just makes the game a lot easier and very different. It makes you, allows you to slow things down. It also creates a, a little bit of balance in terms of where you have scoring come from, one on the perimeter, but now also around the basket in the interior. David hits both six points for the senior out of Croatia. And it's a one-point game. Utah State with the ball and the lead. About halfway through this second half, Porter got caught up. Nine to shoot. Nice cut by Bean, but he's unable to convert. And here come the Bulls. Castaneda gets it back from Williams. Rideau thought about it. will reset here. Watch for the high screen with Rudeau going downhill. This is where he's dangerous. Pass deflected and a foul is called on Merrill. Boy, an almost a taste of his own medicine, meaning what Rudeau did to Merrill early. Textbook in terms of how Merrill covered this, you want to pressure the ball with guys who are passing. Just an unfortunate call. That's the fourth on Merrill. And that's huge. Having having Merrill on the bench at this point. Of course, coach would go back to Nimi. Now he's got only one of his big three on the court. Being also on the bench. Shot clock running down. Rideau oh. for the lead rims out. Well, you'll take that look. No one close to Rudeau that far from the basket. Miller closed that on quickly. Gets it back from Porter, trying to get it to Kada in the post. Good denial by Marachevic. Now gets it. Miller gets some space and knocks it down. <laughs> 32% three-point shooter, Miller, and he fires up a ton of them. 68, or make that 69% of his shots this season have been from beyond the arc. And none bigger than that one on the season, especially with Merrill on the bench. He hadn't made a three all night. Knocks down a huge three-pointer there. Six to shoot. Castaneda left alone, and Castaneda puts it home. Only the third three-pointer made by the Bulls tonight. Well, how about the way that Rudeau's supporting cast has stepped up, starting with Castaneda. He's made some nice plays on both ends, especially the offensive end. Second double-figure game for the sophomore in his South Florida career. And the Bulls get back to within a point. Rito wheels it to Anderson. Good ball movement. Porter the recipient. His first three. And it's back to a four-point advantage for the Aggies. Boy, sharing is carrying. It, 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 contrast in these teams is very interesting. As they get a late clock, they really do a good job of cutting and finding people. Three misses the mark from Jameer Chaplin. Kata comes away with it. Porter, a full head of steam, and he gets hammered. Utah State has been able to keep South Florida at arm's length. Ball movement's been a big part of it. Ball movement's been all of it for Utah State. And stepping up when Merle's down. We got a good one here, Robert. 55-51 Utah State. Utah State here in Houston and 
they have a, a game in Florida, not at the University of Florida. That game's actually going to be just outside of Miami at the NHL arena out there where they come home for a game against Eastern Oregon. Then that game against UNLV puts them back into conference play. They've already played two conference games, winning at San Jose State in an overtime at home against Fresno State as the Mountain, Mountain West is one of those conferences that is playing 20 conference games. So that means the school Yeah, Robert, the Mountain West is one of those conferences I think that I would hope would get more respect than it does. I agree. Again, I'll, I'll add a name of a guy you might have heard of named Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. You heard of him? Yeah, San Diego State, right? There you go. My man, exactly. And so you're telling me you wouldn't want to see him in the NCAA tournament? Absolutely. Or at least in postseason play? It was Utah State that won the Mountain West last year. And they're the preseason favorites to win it again this year. San Diego State picks second in the league. They're currently 20th. That's in the where San Diego, San Diego State lives in. They're, they're always one, two, or three in that league. Rideau trying to get South Florida closer. Ball will go to Utah State. Uh, Coach Fisher, who was once at Michigan, just really did a great job of setting up San Diego State for, for where they are. Just a, a great program that he built. He's gone now and retired from the program. But it's a great, great program. Miller blows that on quickly. Ada cross court pass to Porter. Shot clock in single digits. Anderson with the left hand, unable to finish, but gets it back. And this time he is able to finish. Anderson is just such a load and a difficult player to handle because he can rebound the ball, finish around the rim. He's also much stronger and bigger than he looks. Have a high pass, Dawson. So back, back to the zone. And a nice layup, Dawson from Casaneda. Five points for the transfer from Oklahoma State. And Dawson did a nice job of using the rim to finish on the other side. Miller, a terrible pass. They were able to come up with it after it bangs off the backboard. Yeah, a terrible pass and threw right in the coverage that was already there. South Florida trying to cut into this five-point deficit. Rideau unable to finish. Offensive rebound. Brown gets hammered. And he has two coming up. Well, I thought Rideau almost just surprised himself with how open he was. I think the, the mere presence of Nimi created that miss, but just a nice job. Talked about this earlier in the game. This is a great, USF is a great second chance, second burst of energy type team. Extra effort team, Robert. They, this, they're relentless in terms of their pursuit, in terms of what they're trying to execute. Waiting for LaQuincy Rideau to straighten out his contact lens situation. And apparently he's good to go. That foul, by the way, on Kata, his third for Utah State. And South Florida will be shooting free throws the rest of the half. And that's big because they need much offense as, as they can get with Kata taking the seat with the three fouls. So with Bean coming back in the game right now is just about manning the ship until you can get Merle back on the floor. Both three throws are knocked in by Brown. 
Back to a three-point advantage for Utah State. And out of control quarter. Had it knocked away, apparently. South Florida not so sure. Well, I don't know about that one. Looks like Utah State might have got, got away with one there. Okay, here you go. Merrill back in the game. This will change things offensively. Playing with the four fouls. Merrill wheeling inside. Open shot for Rito. And off the front iron. Collins, he's back in the game as well for South Florida. Off balance and gets it to go. Boy. Collins is a guy with one gear. That time it worked. And he's going full speed and nothing else. Just four points for Collins, who has four fouls. And Anderson, he draws a foul and will go to the line. That was impressive by Collins. He was not going to be denied there, Lance. No, he wasn't. And he didn't need to necessarily be denied because there was really no defense that got in front of him, which would have likely been difficult anyway, the way he was weaving in and out of people. Like they were cones <laughs> yeah. on a field. Anderson, an 84% free throw shooter, but missing the first. USF substitution number one. Castaneda, who's given the Bulls some really good minutes tonight, will come back in for Rideau. Yeah, which is an interesting substitution at this point. I guess it's the only time you could really get him any real rest. Being down one, having the game this close, but we're coming down the home stretch. Empty trip for Anderson. And it's still a one-point lead for the Aggies. Castaneda, or Collins rather, trying to work his way inside. Eight to shoot. Durr, skip pass, open is Brown, but he misses everything, and a foul on the rebound. That's on Durr, and that's going to be the fourth on the sophomore. And that means free throws for Utah State in the boat play in the American Conference against SMU. Two-point lead for South Florida. Under three minutes remaining. Utah State trying to avoid back-to-back -back losses. And a travel is called underneath on Utah State. And you can see what Utah State has done. They set the stage for the big three. And this is who you want to have the ball, one of your big three. Point of emphasis again, traveling. Can't slide that foot once you create a pivot. That's what Justin Bean did there. Collins trying to work his way inside. Dead gives off to Castaneda. Collins bumped. And then the ball knocked out of bounds. Will stay with South Florida. Utah State disagrees. Let's get another look at it here. It was Collins. Oh, that was off of Collins. Off his leg. <laughs> and it's not under two minutes, so can't go to the monitors, there the officials, exactly. on that out of bounds. So a break for South Florida, leading by two, and Castaneda gives it away with the illegal screen on Porter. Yep, break back. Break back that way, unable to capitalize on it. Right after the DHO, you can't turn that shoulder and put it right into the defender. Porter Jr. doing an excellent, excellent job of selling it. Utah State down by two, lost to BYU in Salt Lake City on Saturday. As the three is taken from the right wing, and boy, did Utah State need that. Boy, and Porter Jr. did a great job of being patient and looking for what the defense was giving away, which was that three. Robert, this game has all the feel of one of two things. Whoever has the ball last, last possession game, or an overtime. Take your time, take your time. Man, not in front of me. Booyah! <laughs> Boy, we're having fun. Welcome back to Houston, where Utah State is up one point over South Florida. Watch as Porter Jr. comes, stop there. 
You'll see all of this space. He's just surveying the land, but guess what he's going to do? No one's up on him. He can see it. He's going to stop and pop. Great vision and great pace by Porter Jr. in the way he executed off of that screen. That's textbook for a coach. The czar of the Telestrator, Lance Blanks. <laughs> Apologies <laughs> to Mike Fratello. There you go. I was going to say, I've heard that before. You steward scotted me. <laughs> He steward scouted us with the booyah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so Utah State with a, a one-point lead. To, curious to see what South Florida does out of this timeout. Yeah, this is about trying to get a bucket. Obviously, they set here in game plan for just what you saw. Udo going downhill. Oh, what a three from the left wing. David Collins, he's been quiet and in foul trouble. His first three-pointer of the game, and it's a two-point lead for South Florida. You know, with 90 seconds on the clock, Robert, you have a lot of time, but guaranteed each team will take their best shot and get the best look by their best players here down the stretch. And Merrill, he gets stripped. Here comes Collins going the distance, and he'll head to the line. It looked like Collins made his mind up to dunk that ball early, which allowed the defense to stay relevant in this play. Speaking of Collins there, late rotation, he knocks it down. Head, thumbs up to Coach Gregory. These guys have the green light. I mean, he didn't even break stride with that still. And it looks like his relentless, willful style of play starting to bode well for USF here down the stretch. 63% free throw shooter, able to knock in the first. Can put the Bulls up by two possessions if he's able to hit the second. And he does just that. Nine nothing run for the Bulls. And yeah, they've turned it up another notch. There's a sense of focus. Data lays it in and draws the foul. Coming up big when the Yankees really needed it. Well, in half court, both teams is doing an exceptional job. Again, getting good shots on the right people. Americans got caught leaning into the paint, and he separated away from the big. It was literally a straight line to catch and finish. Able to connect on the free throw, and it's a two point lead for South Florida. Rideau, with under a minute to play, looking to expand on the Bulls' advantage. And this is a great luxury not to have to have the ball in Rideau's hands, going to Collins now. And Collins wanted the foul, doesn't get it. Kata comes up with it. And here come the Aggies for the lead. And unable to convert Porter. Kata fighting for it. And what's the call? It's a jump ball, and the arrow belongs to the Aggies. That was a great call that could have ended up with it being a foul on Williams, I thought, by the officials. That was just a great call. Here is going to be a skirmish for the ball. Did a nice job making sure that they got that call right. I agree with you, Williams. Yeah, that's, he had his hands on the ball. Yes, he did. Absolute right call. Utah State in the timeout here with the basketball on the possession arrow. And yet, right now in this timeout, you've got to have a lot of focus defensively on the big three. If it's me. I'm putting a lot of my energy into Merle. He's the biggest, in my estimation, of the big three. He's 85% free throw shooter, 42% three point shooter. So look for him to come off of some type of screen action. The other. The other thing is we have a shot clock of 20 seconds, so there's a 9.3 differential. So whoever gets a potential rebound, if this ball is shot and hits the rim, 
that team will have the last possession. If Utah State doesn't score here and USF gets the rebound, they'll have to foul right away because they'll be down two points. Utah State will. Watch Merle here coming from out of bounds, though. Potentially get this right back. Goes to Porter. He was looking for Merle. Gets it to Bean, cutting to the basket, and we're tied. Eight points for Bean and a timeout. Great action. You saw they tried to go back to Merle. USF did the right thing in denying him, and Utah State doing what they do, cutting and diving to the basket. Yeah, their movement, Utah State without the ball, you see their beam has been impressive all game. Well, yeah, and Rideau, again, he got caught. We talked about this earlier. He got caught, and they dove right to the basket. So if you're South Florida here, 23.7 left, you're, you're playing for the final shot, right? Yeah, and I can tell you right now, 95% what is going to happen. <laughs> so here you see Rudeau, again, turns his head, and the cutter cuts right to the basket. Rudeau has this going downhill because he's done such a good job. And when I say going downhill, at the top, just into the front court, and the big will come up right into the middle of the court to set the screen. Utah State has had a very difficult time guarding Rideau. Bulls trying to pick up their fourth consecutive victory. Utah State trying to avoid their second consecutive loss. They came into this game 10-2. If they had lost to BYU on Saturday, they probably would be ranked this week. They were right on the precipice of others receiving votes in last week's poll, but then that loss to BYU pretty much eliminated the chances of Utah State getting ranked this week. They still are receiving votes in the latest poll. They have been ranked. They were ranked preseason. Got as high as 15 before their first loss of the season at St. Mary's back in late November. And I'm sure this is, we talked about playing a number of games. This is a different team and the one that would have played in early November. But watch the screen come up right behind Porter Jr., the defender. And then Rideau will be required to go make a play to finish this game. If he can't make something at the rim, look for the shooters out at the corner. Here it is. Running down the clock, going to the basket, now cut off. One second, three from the left wing, and we're going to overtime as Castaneda unable to finish this one in regulation. Boy, what a great job by both the defense and the offense. They faked the high screen and allowed Rideau just to go one-on-one -on -one and try to create something for himself. He didn't get overzealous, took his time, did the best thing you could do, which was find shooters along the perimeter. You couldn't ask for anything better from either ball club. This will be the second overtime game for Utah State. They beat Fresno State by seven in overtime back in Logan, Utah on December 7th. South Florida, they're playing their first overtime game of the season. Okay, we talked about it, Robert. We said last possession or overtime. Yeah, you're... It's exactly what it came down to. I mean, both teams essentially got what they wanted. Maybe you might have thought Rideau hopefully maybe could have got the shot, but they had to know that he would be guarded extremely closely and focused on as Utah State knew what USF was having so much success with in, in the first half and most of the game. Yeah, I'd have to think if you're Utah State, you got the ball out of Rideau's hands, you have to consider that a win defensively. Castaneda got a pretty good look, but great point you don't want you don't want Rideau to be the one to beat you there that's that's a great point and same with Merle I right mean, essentially the possession before USF did the same thing in making sure that Merle wasn't the guy to get the shot to potentially beat him you give Merle a shot you give Rideau a shot either one of those guys can beat you so you you want it to come from someone else thing I've been really impressed about though Robert is how the supporting cast of Rideau has really stepped up I mean, you, had a, you have a big three coming into tonight for Utah State, an established big three. You kind of had a big two or have a big two 
with Collins and Rideau, but other guys have stepped up. Williams has been great. Durr has been great. A lot of guys have been really good for USF. And they've needed it, especially with Collins in foul trouble much of the game. They have to figure it out and get it done themselves. Certainly you don't want to not call right. things, but in a play like that, and you might even could have called a foul on the rebound if you were going to make some calls. Utah State looking to add to their one-point lead. Kata looking to work, gets it back to Merrill. Bean left alone and unable to finish. Collins gets the rebound. Yeah, not necessarily the shot they want, the little push shot. And the blocking foul called on Utah State. Collins with that full head of steam. And that push by Bean, only 16% from the three. And that's on Merrill, and that's it for him. Utah State's leading wow. scorer with 21. Came in averaging 17 a game. The Aggies will have to compete the rest of the night without him. That's a huge loss and a huge, maybe the biggest play of the game for Collins, really for USF and getting him out of the game. And typically coaches are good about going at players who are potentially in foul trouble. So well executed, and Collins recognizes so he recognizes this mismatch, and we already know he has one speed, and it's go. That's a, with a nice little hesitation inside out move. It's a huge bonus in getting Murrow out of the game. Well, an empty trip for Collins, and it's still a one point lead for the Aggies. Mentioned earlier, Utah or South Florida has been good for the most part from the line tonight, but it's been dreadful most of the year. Rito getting it inside to Kata. Collins showed a double team, and he spins around Marichevich and draws the foul. That was a nice possession. You, you mentioned showing. That's called stunting, where you fake as if you're going to double. There's nothing coming from the baseline side. Wow. Third on Rashawn Williams with the foul. Kata at the line. Second on the team with 16, make it 17. He's really been a difference maker. Greg Smith has been able to play his offense through Kata because he's such a good passer. He's so adept at getting the ball to his teammates in addition to what he can do himself in the low post as a scorer. Playing in just his third game of the season. This is his first start this year. The Mountain West Freshman of the Year last season. Three-point lead for Utah State. Collins inside, and he'll go to the line. Boy, and Collins has really gotten things going for him. I tell you, USF and Coach Gregory do a great job of putting the hands in the right guy. Hello, and put the ball right back in the basket. Castaneda off glass, and it's back to a one-point game. He's done a nice job off the bench. Xavier Castaneda, sophomore guard out of Chicago, has got 11. Just his second double-figure game of his college career. Porter with 10 to shoot. And Anderson called for the travel. Minute 33 remaining. Well, Porter has been just great about getting to the right places and doing what he needs to do. But that's an example of a big slipping in. You've got to help. And Castaneda, how about his relentless pursuit? Attacking the feet. Creating around the room. Here's the relentless pursuit by Collins, and back on top go the goal. These guys are men. They're like linebackers, Robert. I mean, I mean, they're shedding people at the rim and creating space. I mean, he's not literally going by him in a way that he's pushing him with his shoulders to create the space needed to finish. Unable to connect on the free throw, so it remains a one-point Bulls lead. Just over a minute remaining at the Toyota Center, second of three games of this college basketball triple header, the home of the Houston Rockets. Utah State calls timeout. 
As they're going to talk over this next possession here. Yeah, you want to make sure you get an excellent shot without Merrill on the floor. Yeah, without Merrill, without Cato, where do where does Utah State go here? Well, it's Bean. Bean becomes the other guy. I would expect uh, action that involves both Porter Jr. and Bean you know I mean? because he's the third of the big three that is left in terms of being on the floor. So Porter, obviously, he can get into the paint. He can also shoot the ball pretty well. And then the other, the rest of the supporting cast just has to be prepared if there's a driving situation around the basket for a driving kick. I can almost guarantee you, though, the ball is going to touch Merrill's, I'm sorry, not Merrill, but Beans and Porter's hands. Meanwhile, you know who's getting the ball for South Florida with the way the last several possessions have gone. David Collins saddled by foul trouble much of the game. But he's done a, an excellent job, especially here in the in the second half in overtime. Well, yeah, and I think he's even better to me when he slows down a little bit. I mean, he's not going to totally slow down because that's not who he is. But he's a guy that when he slows his pace down, because he's so strong, he can pretty much get anything he wants. And not only is he physically strong, he's mentally strong because the first 25, 30 minutes of this game have been were very different than what he's shown of late. Utah State looking to get back in the lead. Anderson in the post. Great defense. Defended well underneath, and a foul is called on the rebound. Wow. It will stay with Utah State, but you're right. That was excellent defense by Justin Brown underneath on Anderson. I get it. Anderson's a lot bigger, but Brown held his ground. Maybe he encroached a little bit when Anderson took the shot, but I thought that was just exceptional defense against a very fine ball player in Anderson. Second foul on Brown. Anderson misses the first. He's got four fouls, by the way. Look at that. He's holding his position. No help needed. Holds his position. Where was the foul on Brown? Yeah. Beneficial call. Tie game. Sanderson converts one of two. Under a minute to play. No team is led by more than seven. As South Florida will take the timeout. Yeah, the coaches are calling these timeouts because they want to get the exact play that they want and the ball in the exact person's hands that they want. One of the differences here is here late in the game. During the game, what they'd ultimately do, Robert, is run an out-of-bounds play to get a basket. Here, I believe they're calling the play and they will start the play once the ball has been inbounded versus starting the play on the inbound pass. Battleground. 2K19. That's our next matchup, or at least half of it. Baylor ranked 10th in the latest AP poll, taking on UT Martin. Earlier today, we saw Oregon State hold off UTSA, winning 88 to 78 in the first game of this college basketball triple header. So uh, Baylor will be playing pretty late tonight against UT Martin. Mounted at 74 here in overtime. Collins to the basket, and it's an offensive foul. That was Bean drawing it. Collins' strength became his weakness there because he didn't and couldn't stop. He was committed to go finish. Bean knowing that steps right outside of the semicircle and draws the foul. I think Collins, is this five for him? It is. Yep, he'll have to sit down. So USF now without their leading scorer. As the officials going over to the monitor here. As we get another look at it. Certainly a lot of contact there. It's going to be Utah State ball out of this timeout. 
Yeah, and I think they were looking to make sure that Bean did step outside of the semicircle. And you just got that confirmation from the official that it was to check the semicircle, which you can do this in the last two minutes in overtime. Yeah, you got to love it. They want to get it right, and they got that right. Tie game. Just over a half minute left. Utah State will take the timeout here. So we have an eight second difference between game and shot clock for the Aggies. And you know, you think about obviously you got a tie game at overtime. There's already plenty of entry, right? Then you throw in the fact that three of the best scores on the floor are not on the floor because they fouled out Merrill and Kata for Utah State and Collins fouling out moments ago for for South Florida. Yeah, it's it's a great game because unlikely sources have to step up in terms of people. <laughs> They've got to do different things. Bean is still on the floor. Rideau is still on the floor. I mean, Robert, this is all but a war with who will be the last man standing. Let's see what Utah State draws up here out of the timeout. Look for Porter. Bean action and as a third option and a legitimate third option, Anderson, who can get it done from both the perimeter and around the rim. It's in Porter's hands now. Castaneda stays up on him. And you had a chance to go for two for one. That has gone away. Utah State waiting to get the right shot. Eight to shoot. Porter trying to get it inside, and I believe that's a kick. It is a Marichavik. Yeah, and that'll take the shot clock out of the game. Right. They'll reset, would have reset to 20. Won't reset at all because it's 13.7 seconds left. So indeed, that kick call means the shot clock's turned off at 13.7. Utah State can play for the final shot of overtime. Yeah, it's a totally different game now. Utah State will get the last shot. This will go either in overtime or Utah State will win it. Porter for the win. No good. The putback is good for B. And Utah State wins it in overtime. Justin Bean on the putback. And the Aggies pick up the victory. The officials will check to make sure that it came in time. But I'm pretty sure it did. I could see it clearly from my angle. He got that off well before the shot or before the clock went, went red. Yep, clear as day. But the officials want to err on the side of caution here, so they'll double check. So we get another look at it. That ball's out of his hand with about a second remaining. What amazes you is how the best players always seem to be in the right places and step up at the right time. Being the, the third of the big three, <laughs> stepped up in a big way for Utah State. Finishes with a dozen points. The last two, the biggest for Justin Bean and the Aggies. As the officials are going to put some time back on the clock here. They're going to put point two on the clock. So that means that South Florida can only tap it in. They cannot get off a shot with point two seconds remaining. It has to be a tip in. It's Utah State sets up full court pressure here. Two tenths of a second remaining. And now Brian Gregory will call timeout. So this is has to be almost a, a difficult play on this last play. But let's go back to that last shot. Well, had it in the guy's hands who they wanted in Porter Jr. He recognized that he had a good clean look from deep as the screen, the defense went under the screen. 
guys went for the ball was defensively instead of blocking out bodies first. It potentially could have cost them this game. Only thing that USF can hope for here, as you mentioned, Robert, is a tip or potentially a foul right. as they throw the ball the length of the court. I mean, it almost feels like an impossible situation. You got to go the length of the court. You got to get someone to tip it just perfectly, or like you said, hope you get fouled. That's, that's what South Florida staff's going to Yeah, that's, that's as likely as a made tip from the foul. You mean. Yes, the yeah. foul is as, as if not more likely than tipping the ball in from full court situation. So it's going to be Rideau throwing it in. He's going to go with the football pass here. And it's batted away in Utah State with the victory. Utah State got a fight tonight from South Florida. But the Aggies have moved to 11-2 on the year. And South Florida, their first loss in their last four games. Did you check this off? As Utah State with the victory in overtime. No team led by more than seven in this ball game. It's the Aggies who come up with the victory. As we take a look at the last play, they put two tenths of a second back on the clock after this play by Bean. A great look there for Porter that rims out and then with the ball pinballing around, Bean, Johnny on the spot, hit the basket. Then they put two tenths of a second back on the clock. After that play, time had expired. They looked at the monitor, the officials did, and put two seconds back. But, or two tenths of a second, I should say. South Florida only with a, a chance at a tip really in an impossible mission and Utah State able to knock it away to get the victory. So the Aggies, after a, a tough loss, lost by four to BYU on Saturday, is able to, to bounce back tonight to, to pick up the victory. They're 11 and two now on the year. They'll head to the Sunshine State for a game against Florida in the Miami area on Saturday. That's their next contest in uh, South Florida. They fall to six and five on the year. See their three game win streak come to an end. They'll also head down to South Florida in that same event that Utah State's playing in, that they're playing Florida. South Florida is playing Florida State in that tournament outside of Miami. So that'll do it for us here from Houston for game two of our triple header. For Lance Blanks and Robert Ford saying so long for Houston. Where once again, the final score, Utah State 76, South Florida 74 in overtime. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.